Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd Ayyul Ahbab, continuing on in our study uh, Perhaps this will be our last uh, lesson of this very short, short uh, dars pertinent to determining a Salafi from a Muqtadi'a and mentioning amongst those principles we mention we mention the Qaeda a saddest the seventh uh, or the sixth pr uh, principle is that differing with a foundation from amongst the usul of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah is a bid'ah that this in and of itself is a bid'ah and we mention the example of Iman uh, what Ahl Sunnah believes with regards to Iman fluctuating that it's not always high and it's not always low, bi'idhnillah, and that it fluctuates according to the deeds that you do. If you're doing good deeds, then this increases your iman, and doing bad deeds decreases your iman. And many ahadith illustrate this for us, such as the hadith of Abi Sayyid al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said, Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqul, man ra'a minkum munkarin fali ghayruhu biyad. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعِفَ بِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعِفَ بِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ عَدَوْفَ الْإِمَانِ رَوَهُ مُسْلَمْ In the hadith of Sahih Muslim uh, of Abi Sayyid al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying that whoever does a مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ whoever sees a munkar, a wickedness then they should change it with their hands and if he is unable to do so then he should change it with his tongue, meaning speak out against it. And if he's unable to do so, he should change it with his heart, and that is the weakest form of iman. And the shahid here, or the main point here, is that the Prophet ﷺ described all that as iman, because he said that is the weakest form of faith. That is the weakest form of iman, letting us know that deeds of the uh, hands, you know, our actions, and our statements... And the actions of the heart are all a part of Iman. They're all a part of faith in Islam. And that hadith is just one evidence amongst the many. And with regards to that, so whoever differs with that, they have differed with the, uh, uh, an asul from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and that means they have a bid'ah in their aqidah. In, the, in that aspect of their aqidah, they have a bid'ah. Or, for example, the Qadriya. The Qadriya differ with Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah with regards to the Qadr, the, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ahl Sunnah has agreement upon. You know, that the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all things. He knows all things. He wrote everything in Allah al Mahfud. And He. Uh, Everything in is in accordance with his Mashiach, with his will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this are the different levels of the Qadr. Ahl Sunnah agrees upon that. That is a part of the Usul of Ahl Sunnah. However, the Qadriya, they differ with that Usul, and this is how they fall into Bid'ah, is that they, or at least one of the ways they fall into Bid'ah, is because they disagree with that Usul and they say, no, Allah uh, did not, does not have infinite knowledge, that Allah didn't fully know knowledge of the Qadr. He doesn't know what's going to happen or that we are forced to do our the actions that we do so how can we be responsible that's not uh we we you know when we do sin we shouldn't be held responsible because we're forced to do this this is how they have um made a innovation in their understanding their facet understanding of the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and where they differed with ahl sunnah in creed in in asl in an asl from amongst the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they differed, and that is the Qadr. They differ with regards to the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is how they differ with the usul. So then that makes it a bid'ah. The next qa'ida is going to bring some other light for us about determining when someone is a bid'ah. So he said, A qa'ida sabi'ah al akhdu bima ashtaharat mukhalafatuhu lil kitabi wa sunnah wal ijma'ah bid'ah. Uh, now, so he said that to take the, 
though to accept those things which are well known in their contradicting the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma is known as a bid'ah. So this is also it's similar to the other qaida that the person who accepts these uh, uh, these foundation uh, this contradictory foundations to the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma has fallen into a bid'ah as well that they've fallen into in innovation to accept this to practice this these things that are well known he said al akhdu bima ashtaharat mukhalafatu these are things which are well known you know and then the ulama they speak a lot of, about a lot of issues in the religion uh, they they say those issues especially with regards to the issue of takfir and applicable probably to the issue of tabdi in one way or another but especially takfir they mention um, those things which are ma'lum min ad-din bi those things which are well known in the religion by necessity. You know, every Muslim knows that drinking alcohol is haram. That is something ma'lum min ad-din bi Why? It is, it's known by necessity. Every Muslim, pretty much, every Muslim knows this. They, they should not be unaware of this because almost every non-Muslim knows Muslims are not supposed to drink alcohol and definitely they know about pork. So those are things that are ma'lum min ad-din bi Another thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. You know, this is a part of Tawheed. As had the ma'lum min ad-din bi That's something well known to the religion out of necessity. That's an asal, a foundation, which is well known to the religion out of necessity. So the one who differs with these uh, things, they have fallen into a bid'ah. And per, depending on the issue, it can be bid'ah. Uh, bid'ah divided into two types bid'ah mukaffara or bid'ah ghayr mukaffara it could be the innovation that takes you out of the fold of Islam or the innovation which does not take you out of the fold of Islam and it just depends on the issue and so forth and we're, this is not the time nor place to go into detail about this we'll go into the last issue here the qaida famine which is very pertinent to those last two principles so hopefully we'll have a chance to finish before the time to pray al qaida famine al muayyin قد قد يتخلف الحكم يتخلف الحكم عليه بالابتداع لفوات الشرط أو لوجود المانع وإن كان مقتضى فيه قائما. So the last principle that he mentioned, the last part of this treatise, he mentioned the eighth principle, and he said, and this relates to a specific a specific individual might differ they differ with regards to the ruling pertinent to them regarding innovation and that could be due to missing a condition or because there is something prohibited as uh, something a prohibitor in place which prevents making tibdi of this person, which prevents declaring this person an innovator, even though uh, what they have done is an innovation. To make this clear, it's very important. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, and I, I wish I had the statement exactly with me, uh, but he said, which means, Laysa kullu this is a qaida. This is another principle that Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah he said and is well known to the ulama that everyone who falls into an innovation is not an innovator. So that's imperative for us to know. That sometimes there's something that prevents making a tibdi or declaring that person to be an innovator. They could have fallen into an innovation out of a mistake. It could be something minor and something that they correct, whatever the situation being, or they're new to the religion, they don't know, you know, all of those things which prevent making tibdir, which is similar to those things which make prevent making takfir of someone. And the, and the, this is actually the principle is, and I may have made a mistake, or actually it's it's relevant to both, but I know Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah has a statement, kullu men waqa'a fi kufr. Laysa kafir. 
basically, and this is the principle, and it's a principle pertinent to Tekfir, and it's also pertinent to Tibdi, as he mentioned in this treatise, that everyone who, who falls into disbelief is not a disbeliever. So a Muslim can make a mistake and do an act of kufr that takes them out of the fold of Islam in general, but due to other reasons that does not necess necessitate that that particular individual is a disbeliever. And this is definitely not the time to go too much into detail about that, but that is just an important principle that we have to understand that, for example, one example we'll make, uh, and it's also in the uh, from a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is that the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, a group of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, they were new to Islam, and they, uh, this is the hadith of uh, Abu uh, Waqid al-Laythi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Kunna kharajna ma Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila hunayn, wa nahnu hudatha ahd bi kufr. He said, we were going with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Battle of Hunayn. Uh, and we were new to Islam. And so since they were going to fight jihad, fi sabilillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they they found a tree that the mushrikeen used to hang their weapons on to seek blessings from that tree. This was a practice that the pagans used to practice in those days. So these sahaba that were brand new to Islam, they said, Ya Rasulullah, aj'alana dhatul anwa, dhatul anwat kama lahum dhatul anwat. They said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make for us one of these that one of these trees similar to the way that they have one of those trees. You know, they wanted a place to put their weapon and get blessings from the tree. And then the Prophet Sallallahu reprimanded them, but he didn't make takfir of them because they were new to Islam. They didn't know the hukum. They asked and they didn't know that seeking blessings from trees and things like this is haram and it's, uh, it's a type of uh, disbelief that can take you out of the fold of Islam. So although they entered into that form uh, of shirk, they were new to Islam, so that was what the ulama they say al uzr bi jahil. One of the things we gain from that, Shaykh Salim bin Fuzan, after Allah Taala mentions in his Nawaqid al Islam, that what we gain from that is the uzr bi jahil, the excuse of ignorance that someone is new to Islam and they don't know the hukum and they might fall into an act of even disbelief or they might fall into a bid'ah. That doesn't mean you say oh, you're a mubtadi or you're a kafir. No. So that's the difference between takfir al-ma'ayin wa takfir al-mutlaq. Or, in, if you want to say, tibdi al-ma'ayin wa tibdi al-mutlaq. And to end on this note, takfir al-ma'ayin means that you are declaring a specific individual who has fallen into kufr to be a disbeliever. That the, the conditions have been applied and you are a person of knowledge who is able to do so, maybe a qad, maybe a judge in an Islamic country, or you're an alim, or, or whatever the situation is, that you have the tools to be able to discern that and to implement those principles and see and look at that individual and, and find out why they did what they did and, and, and the other aspects pertinent to takfir, and yukum alayhi al hujjah that you establish the, the proof and the evidence upon them or for them, and they still did that, so then you made takfir. That means you have to be a person of knowledge who is able to do that. So letting us know that that is a takfir ma'ayin, meaning regarding a specific individual. Takfir mutlaq means that whoever does such and such sin is a disbeliever. And then that means that the action, this action itself, is an action of disbelief, but everyone who does that action is not a disbeliever. So that's why you have to look at, then it comes down to takfir ma'ayin, talk, talking about making the ruling of takfir on the specific individual. Likewise with bid'ah, that everyone who does a bid'ah is not an innovator. So maybe a person falls into bid'ah because they are new to Islam or whatever the situation, even an alam, an alam salafi, an alam sunni could fall into an, uh, an, an aspect of bid'ah from, from a misunderstanding or whatever the situation may be. They can it happen. No one's infallible. And with that, that doesn't mean he's no longer salafi or he's no longer sunni. He's no longer from ahl sunnah or he's from ahl bid'ah now. No. And because he, you know, the, you have to look at the principles pertinent to that, whether he did it out of his desires, whether he is willing to uh, accept the uh, the evidences and, and 
free himself from that, or whatever the situation may be, all those issues pertinent to the criterion for making these rulings. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. With sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the Nabi and Muhammad. Thus ends our study of this treatise. And may Allah bless us with tawfiq and a class with the battle. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the Nabi and Muhammad.